All right, uh, half ass stacker OL posted a video on June 30th about numismatics versus semi numismatics. And I was reading through the comments and I posted my comment there. And uh, Corn here asks if I made it up. Semi doesn't exist. It's never been used by anyone who collects coins. It's a term only found in the stacking community. Stacking community, I, I think what Corn means by that is the uh, YouTube stacking community. And I posted my response there. I respectfully disagree. Uh, Salvate, he says... To him, there's no such thing as semi-numismatic, and he posted a video uh, four years ago, which I did watch. And it was interesting reading these comments down here. Also, um, a Mr. Monkey Swag says that semi-numismatics is a term invented by stackers. And uh, there was a couple replies. I did reply on there. I disagreed with him as well. And, uh, you know, where where am I going to prove this? Where could I prove this? Well, what I did was I wanted to uh, t find out when this word was first used. But here, take a look at this. When was YouTube first created? On February 14th of 2005. So I think the stacking community was created after that, I'm, I'm guessing. Or the YouTube stacking community. Uh, but I'm not sure. But anyways, um, let me take you to the Numis, Numen, numismatic portal. Let me take you actually to the ANA, the American Numismatic Association. Uh, they have a feature here about the Newman numismatic portal. Uh, basically what this is, is they're just taking anything they can find that is relating to and pertaining to the study of numismatics, scanning the document, and, and listing it. And this was actually, uh, here let me read this. What seems to be a secret to a great deal of people in our community is the Newman Numismatic Portal. This is a fabulous online research opportunity offered to all at no charge. It was funded by Eric P. Newman Numismatic Education Society and administered by Washington University in St. Louis. Its stated goal is to provide the most comprehensive numismatic research tool available online. So, uh, you know, I've been using the Newman Numismatic Portal for quite a while. And uh, what you can do up here, you can... Enter, uh, you know, a text and perform a search of so semi numismatic and search, and then all it'll take you to all these articles. So, uh, where did I have here? Uh, I found an article here. This was actually from the Coin Dealer newsletter. Now, the Coin Dealer newsletter, the gray sheet, as you call it actually started in 1963 so this is 20 years after the gray sheet started and I printed this out so I printed this out on my computer and I wanted to read it uh, again this is from October got a piece of chrome on there October 1983 the role of precious metals, there's that crumb again. The role of precious metals in coin sales. We all know that Krugerrands, Canadian Maple Leaves, 90% junk silver coins, and the new U.S. gold marketed by J. Aaron and Company are decidedly not numismatic coins. As a result, I've noticed many collectors ignore the importance of bullion coins and the precious metals in general. There is a middle ground of possible uh, detente, 
Detente, I had to look that up. It's kind of like, uh, you know, bringing into harmony. So there's a possible middle, middle ground bringing into harmony between the collector and the investor. And that's the area of semi-numismatic coins. These coins operate on a double play principle, balancing the bullion content, which investors are usually most interested in, and the numismatic premium for the rarity, which interests collectors as well as investors. The coin market reacts to the bullion market, but the important difference between the two is that the rare coin investments minimize the downside risk inherent to the bullion market. When silver declined 90%, from $50 to $5 per ounce in just over two years, silver dollars dropped only 35%, and those same silver dollars have now exceeded their 1980 market tops. By comparison, silver bullion would need to sell for $55 per ounce today to match the performance of Morgan dollars. So this is talking about the drop from 50 to 5 uh, in the 80s, okay? A second way in which the precious metals market affects coin sales is a, the tremendous volume of investing currently churning in the precious metals markets. Most coin collectors would not be aware of the staggering statistics that every ounce of gold mined throughout the world each year is bought and sold 35 times over on the futures market before it is ever delivered. And uh, it's probably more than that today in 2018. This high velocity of investment turnover is unprecedented in the coin market, in the coin market, or any other major market for that matter. The point is, precious metals investors learn very quickly that pure bullion plays do not satisfy their need for long-term profits and short-term protection from downside corrections. They buy gold, generally, because of their philosophical belief in the hard money philosophy propounded in literally hundreds of investment advisories. If gold appears to be in the doldrums within the 400 to 430 channel price since February of uh, 28, February 28th of um, 1983, they will look around for hard money investments with more profit potential, more historical interest, more beauty, and more protection from unfavorable taxation, regulation, and market variances. Variances. The best answer, of course, is coins, specifically the U.S. silver dollars and world crown size coins with semi numismatic double play. So here is an article from 1983 and you know what I was able to find this word this word so so here really I want to say this is the first time semi numismatics was defined but this is not the first time this word was ever used I went to uh when I went to school, one of my teachers told me that you could write a check on a piece of paper. You don't really need, you don't need to have a checkbook. As long as you write down the numbers, that's all you need. Uh, using the Newman Numismatic Portal, I was able to find the Numismatic Review this is a scientific digest that is from June of 1943. So we're going back 40 years from 1983 to 1943. And uh, we find here semi-numismatic match covers on page 16. And if you go to page 16... It talks about, uh, recently came to our attention a credit savings check printed on a paper matchbox cover. So what happened here is somebody actually took and wrote a check 
on a matchbox. You know, you'd go to the gas station or whatever and you get a box of matches or a lot of times they'd have advertising on these boxes. Somebody took that, uh, took the inner part out and the outer part, they unraveled it and wrote a check on that, okay? And that's where we find this word being used. It was a semi-numismatic object. This was the first time they've seen a monetary value attached to a match cover. So this is not talking about uh, what we think of semi-numismatics today, but this is the first time that word was used, or at least that's what I can find. So there you have it. Uh, semi-numismatics. Semi-numismatics. Here is the first time it was defined back in October of 1983. You know, freeze frame that, read it again. And uh, I'll tell you, a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, protecting from unfavorable taxation regulations and market variances, I'll tell you, a lot of that pertains to us today. So, very cool. Um, I'm not sure what to title this. You know, this is also, for those of you who don't know what the Newman Numismatic Portal is, uh, it's a very good website. So, if you're looking really for any information about any coin, uh, it'll be here. It will be here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody. Again, we're just trying to... Uh, share the knowledge we're just trying to be respectful and share the knowledge so you know is semi numismatics a term invented by stackers no i respectfully disagree now it is possible it is very possible that uh uh when i watched salvate's video argent argent um i forget the number 47 maybe Argent Argent 47, he, he had used that word, um, you know, maybe he, maybe he just thought of that word. It is possible that he just thought of it and, and didn't uh, read about it or hear about it. It's Argent Argent 47 on the term numismatic. So I, I did watch that video. Anyways, uh, I hope that clears it up. Thanks for watching, guys. Semi numismatics. It's that double play. It's the harmony. It protects you from the downside risk. Uh, and and you know what a better time to talk about this than when it dropped from fifty to five in just two years. That's quite a drop. You want to satisfy long term profits, short term protection from the downside corrections you got to get the US silver dollar size crown size with the semi numismatic double play and there's a lot of other ones a lot of the pre 33 gold I'm gonna tell you uh, you could have a coin if it's if it's pre 33 gold and it was holed drilled through there's a hole in it if it's you know damaged quality you bust out one of these price guides, it's going to have the same price all the way through. It's going to have the same price all the way through. You know, take any pre-33 gold coin. Look at this. They don't even show grades below VF, okay? VF, 20. VF, 30. It's the same price. It's the same price. 25, 25. It's the same price, okay? It's, this is all, this is all not numismatic. Semi-numismatic is going to start here. And, and it just depends on where it shifts from semi-numismatic into true numismatic, okay? True numismatic. It just depends on how far away you're peeling from the bullion content. Sorry to make this a long one, guys. Um, please thank you for watching. And, and, and thank you, Half-Ass Stacker, for uh, posting that video. This was fun for me to uh, to find this. I like that Newman numismatic portal. This is John with Carfield Heights Coin Club. Thank you for watching.